Well, I guess we'll get started. Uh, good morning and welcome everyone to Grenfell Campus Graduate Studies. Uh, if you missed our original welcome back in early August, it's hard to believe that we're now at the 8th of September. Uh, where did our summer go? I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend and took advantage. We've had, we had great weather here in Newfoundland. If you're not here, sorry to rub it in, but we have fantastic weekend of weather. Uh, and uh, it made for a great weekend for sure for us. Uh, I'm going to let Dr. Foley take the lead on this session and I'll be here. I'll be monitoring the chat room. If you have any questions, uh, <clears throat> feel free to use the chat room and we can put that information there or respond to you or whatever it is you have questions or concerns about. Uh, just a reminder to keep your microphones muted to avoid any background noises and uh, we should be fine from going moving forward. Anyway, welcome. Thank you, Nada. Thank you. Um, so everyone, I think I've communicated with you um, all on email, but this is the first time you might have seen me. So I'm Paul Foley. Um, uh, we're, we're just really excited to, to finally get to this day as odd as it might seem to be <laughs> online. Um, and, and we're very excited to welcome you to the Masters of Arts and Environmental Policy program to Grenfell Campus. We wish we could welcome you to Cornerbrook, um, but uh, that may be for another day. Um, and, and congratulations on getting accepted to the program. Um, just starting off, um, you know, just to let you know that this is one of the most competitive programs uh, across Memorial University in terms of graduate programs. Um, so, you know, we get a lot of applications. So I think you all should feel um, really good about uh, getting here and, and it's a sign of uh, of, of your performance as, as students in your undergrad and, and other parts of your uh, life. So uh, great job in getting here and we're really excited uh, to get started. Um, and for most, if not all of you, um, you know, this is your first time in graduate school, of course, and, and the graduate school experience is, is quite special. Um, you, you, you develop kind of unique, more unique relationships with faculty members, with staff, with fellow students, right, than you might in your undergrad, um, where typically you, you wouldn't develop um, as close relationships and close working relationships with, with those folks. So, um, you know, I, I remember in, in my master's program, um, you know, how, how important it was to, um, you know, get to know faculty, get to know staff, and how really enriching actually um, the other students were from my experience, right? So. Whereas an undergrad, you know, you're you're usually sitting in your desk and focusing on the faculty member and professor. Um, you know, graduate school is really exciting in, in how much I think you can uh, learn from the people sitting next to you in terms of other students. Um, and um, for, certainly for the fall, that will be a bit different. But we we hope, and we're pretty confident that we can uh, have similar experiences, but just in a different way through uh, meeting virtually, meeting online. And, and developing some innovative ways to, to, to ensure you have the kind of uh, experience you might have on campus in terms of interacting with, with other folks. Um, and, you know, if you've uh, joined the orientation session, session this morning, so the grad, School of Graduate Studies is putting off um, a couple of sessions. I think they're the same. There's one in the morning today and then there's one in the afternoon. So if you, if you didn't make this one this morning, um, I'd really highly recommend um, checking out the one in the afternoon. Um, really great advice from, from various leaders uh, at Memorial University. So um, really encourage you to, um, to join there. Really, really uh, useful um, session um, that I, I just mentioned to Nada that I, um, I got off on uh, from a few moments ago. And of course, part of that discussion is, is the sort of new challenges that we're facing in, in, in an era of uh, pandemic. Um, and and uh, I think President Fian Timmons mentioned that, uh, you know, you are, uh, you know, the COVID generation. So going through these big life experiences uh, through a pandemic, right? So um, it's quite different than it might have been if, uh, if there wasn't a pandemic. Um, but we, we think that these challenges will, you know, make us stronger, make you stronger. Um, so we're excited to work with you in whatever way we can to make this uh, a great experience. Um, as I said, I wish I could, you know, uh, welcome you all to Cornerbrook or outside the Forest Center where the Environmental Policy Institute and, and the Research and Graduate Studies offices are. It's, it's a beautiful day here in Cornerbrook. Uh, 
but we're we're still very excited to get uh, to get to know you. Um, so what I was thinking too, and it's this pretty small group here, um, um, is to do maybe a bit of a in introductions. Um, you know, to get start to get to know each other as well as uh, you know, not just introducing yourselves to me, but um, get, getting to know one another uh, at the beginning of this program, right? So um, maybe I can get started here um, and do a bit of a roundtable um, of a quick introduction. So um, again, um, my name is Paul Foley, and I um, I've been here since the start of the graduate program here, the Master's of Arts in Environmental Policy. So. It was first. Um, it was the first uh, graduate program at Grenfell Campus, and we're quite proud of it. Uh, in 2012, it started. Um, I was hired that same year, and uh, the summer before it started. So it was uh, really interesting to compare the, the what we were going through then in terms of creating a new program, uh, welcoming our first students. So very different, different challenges then, but uh, th there was a, a different kind of period of uncertainty for the program. Um, but we've um, grown into a really, really well uh, oil machine, we think, in terms of the program and the, and the faculty involved and the staff support here. Um, so I won't be teaching in the fall, but I'll be teaching uh, environmental political thought in the winter. You know, I've taught that over, over the years, so I'm excited for that. Um, I, uh, if, if I can ask Nada maybe to, to introduce herself too, because as I... Um, I'll probably mention this several times, but a key part of um, the university experience here is the getting to know people, and and Nada is someone you will probably already know a little bit, and and you'll certainly uh, know her as one of the most important contacts you'll have uh, throughout the year or years you'll be here. So I'd like to give Nada an opportunity to just say a bit about herself. Thanks, Paul. Um, good morning, everyone. And yes, I would think that by now all of you have heard me heard from me via email uh, numerous times. As Paul mentioned, uh, I were on, I guess my position, uh, I started in at Grenfell in 2014, and I started actually in the environmental policy uh, department as the administrative and kind of fell in love and have a passion for grad students that I never knew I had before. Uh, with that, I've kind of moved up through the ranks, and so now my current position, I'm the Senior Secretary uh, for the Associate Vice President of Research and Graduate Studies. So we oversee all grad programs here at Grenfell, because uh, each program, of course, is based, uh, two programs are in the School of Science, and one is in the School of Fine Arts. Um, so yeah, I look forward to meeting you all in person, uh, and if you have questions as it relates to your journey through grad school, certainly reach out to me. I may not always have the right answer, but I will find the person who can give it to me. So uh, you've got my email, I'm sure by now, but I will put it in the chat room. Uh, so certainly reach out in any questions you have as it relates to your program, your journey, your finances, whatever it is, don't hesitate to ask. And I will certainly do everything I can to answer your questions. Thanks so much, Nada. Um... And maybe just to give people an idea what, what, what you can introduce yourself as, you may, whatever you want really, but uh, maybe where you're from, where, you're, where, you're, will, where you'll be working from during the fall uh, online in terms of location, country, province, state, um, and, and maybe a bit of your, your interest briefly. Uh, it'd be great to get to know you in a little, uh, a little bit here today. So I'll go, maybe I'll just go around in, in the view that I can see here. So I can see people's names. You can free to to leave off the video or, or turn it on if you want um oh hi kayla um i'll go around in the way I, I see your name pop up on my screen so i think i see um next to nada is michelle michelle saunders michelle did you want to say a few words about yourself hey i'm michelle i'm from happy valley goose bay labrador uh which is where i'm studying this fall uh, I don't really know what else to say. I'll show you guys my dog. She's right here. Great. And, uh, that's it. Great. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Good to have a companion to work with. Yeah. Um, next, I see Colin. Colin Mulch. You're muted, Colin, or or maybe you. Um... You're not hearing us. Okay. 
And maybe um, in the meantime, we can move to Kaylee. Uh, oh, Kelly, you, you unmuted yourself very briefly and then muted, I think you're muted again. Okay. There you go. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Hi, uh, my name is Kaylee McDonald Osborne. I am from Halifax, Nova Scotia. I did my undergraduate degree at uh, the University of King's College in uh, collaboration with Dalhousie. I studied in uh, European studies with a minor in theater. So I'm one of the famed interdisciplinary students here. And uh, I'm coming to you live from Cornerbrook. So you're right, Nada. It was a wonderful weekend. Uh, really sunny. Awesome, thanks, Kayla, and um, and nice to hear you're in Cornerbrook. I know some of uh, some of the students uh, were uh, interested in and in intending to come here and work from here, so that's wonderful. Um, I see your video, Colin. Are you um, ready to say a few words? <laughs> Colin's at work. He's he's oh. currently working, so he's got a chat. It says, "Hi, I'm Colin uh -huh. Walsh, and I'm from Pasadena." And he works with the Department of Fisheries and Land Resources with the government of Newfoundland. So he's currently at work. So he's double dipping today. <laughs> okay. I can see. Um, yeah, I can see the cubicles there. So, uh, Colin, I appreciate you joining us, uh, joining in today. And uh, and no worries. You don't want to create a ruckus there by uh, <laughs> talking too much. Um, awesome. And um, yeah, it's it's always great to get um, you know students. Uh, most years we've had a student or two from um, who work in an in industry or government uh, past or present. And it's, uh, it's, it's really great to have them involved and, and, and bring their knowledge experience uh, into the program and, and share it with others. So that's great. Um, who do I see next? Um, Paige, Paige Percy. Hi everyone, I'm Paige. Um, I'm from Toledo, Ontario. So rural town outside of Ottawa. Um, I just finished my philosophy and international politics. Um, I'm really interested about how to include more people in the environmental policy process and how that works with political parties. Cool. Thanks, Paige. Um, next, I see my screen. They're popping around a bit. Uh, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Charlotte Montgomery. I'm from Peterborough, Ontario, but I will be completing my degree from Charlottetown PEI. Um, I just finished my undergrad from the University of Waterloo in Environment Resources and Sustainability, and I'm interested in Indigenous uh, relations and wildlife uh, harvesting. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Charlotte. And I think I see D Diane next. Hi everyone, my name is Diane. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, Diane. Oh, I just want to mention you. I'm originally from Nigeria, but I live here in the US and I'm super, super excited to be part of this program. I don't know what else to say, but ready to go. <laughs> Excellent. No, it's great to hear that enthusiasm. Awesome. Um, Katie or Katie, sorry. And if I mispronounce your name, please, uh, please feel free to, to correct me. Yeah, it's Katie. You got it right. Um, yeah, so my name is Katie. I am in Calgary, Alberta right now, and that's where I'll be staying this semester. And I just graduated from plant biology with a certificate in sustainability studies um, from the University of Calgary. And I'm hoping to study kind of knowledge mobilization and kind of how the science community interacts with um, environmental policy and the government. So, yeah, I'm really excited. Excellent. Thanks, Katie. So we're going coast to coast almost. Uh, uh, great. Um, oh, Samira, can you hear us, Samira? Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. 
Um, my name is uh, Samira. I'm originally from uh, Iran, Persia, and uh, I'm out of Canada currently. Uh, it's really um, nice for me to join with you um, as, a, as an international student. Uh, my major is industrial safety uh, and uh, I am focused um, in environmental uh, project in my uh, in uh, many different industries in my country such as manufacturing um, oil and gas pipeline and so on uh, but uh, I as uh, I have explained uh, some times ago uh, I uh, need to expand my knowledge in environmental policy and also um, energy systems. My supervisor is Dr. Uh, Richard, and uh, I'm uh, going to um, have a thesis on electrification uh, systems. Yes. Cool. Great. Thanks so much, Samira. Um, and we, we normally have a, a quite a few um, international students in our program um, and uh, a few less this year. I think there's some not able to join us right now, but um, and that's also a really important and enriching part of, uh, I think, the student experience and, and us as faculty and, and staff, I'm sure, too, is, is to <clears throat> you know, the ability to learn from people from very different uh, diverse backgrounds and experiences. So um, that's great. Uh, Tasha, I think you're up next. Hi everyone, my name is Tasha. I'm living in Brandon, Manitoba right now. Um, that's where I'll be for the semester. Uh, I have a couple degrees in biology and environmental technology and really looking forward to the semester. It's nice to meet you all. Um, actually, the part I was most excited for was to come to Corner Brook and meet all of you and work together. So I'm excited that we can do that in some capacity online still. Um, and I don't have a cute dog to show you like Michelle, but in true millennial fashion, I'll show you one of my house plants. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Tasha, and, and welcome house plant to our group here. Um, I think that's all the folks that I can see on my screen, but Nada, if I'm missing anyone, um, please do let me know. And occasionally we have people in by phone, but, um. Yeah, no, that looks that's like the case. that's the yeah. case. Good. Yeah. Good. So, you know, we have about um, 14 or 15 students uh, coming into the program this uh, year. Um, we normally have some last minute uh, shake ups. Um, you know, if a student can't get an international visa or if they get a job somewhere at the last minute. So there's a there's a potential for a bit of change, but uh, there, there'll be a good uh, group of us. And, and I think Tasha, um, we certainly want to create certain venues um, to interact as much as we can. So we have um, we have the technological capability to do that. So, um, but we also want to hear from students in terms of you know what um, ideas that m they might have, what uh, your preference preferences might be in terms of that format online. Is it like weekly meetings? There are a few um, uh, opportunities that I'll mention a little later in terms of. Uh, getting together and uh, sort of webinars and seminars, and, and they'll be ongoing. Um, but we're excited to think about ideas too. Um, so for the rest of, I guess, my part of this session, what we usually do is basically the graduate officer and on the graduate officer gives an overview of the master's program. Um, sort of a reminder, I know many of you, obviously you've looked into this program, you uh, did some research on it and you know a bit about it. Um, and you might know a lot about it. You might know every little detail, but uh, as often the case is, it's, it's useful for to be reminded of the, the key parts, to have uh, advice from faculty members and staff on what things you should keep in mind and what are the key um, milestones, for example, and, and uh, to create your own to-do list in the, in the next week or so as, as you get ready for the program. Um, so, just one thing before I get into the nuts and bolts of the program, um, you know, just in terms of the relationships I mentioned earlier, the importance of uh, contacting, communicating pe with people. You know, if you have any questions generally about the, uh, you know, your 
your experience or your program of studies, generally start with your supervisor. Um, there may be even some adjustments in the supervisory, um, in your supervisor, just uh, which is not uncommon at this stage, but um, that's a really important relationship, you know, with your supervisor. So, um, you know, if, and, and sometimes supervisors are quite different in their styles. Um, and, and this was touched on in, in the session this morning. So you might have a supervisor who's very, very hands off and, and will uh, sort of expect you to get in touch with them if you have any questions. Others are a bit more hands on or, um, you know, set up weekly meetings on their own initiative and, and will be clear with you on what they expect. Um, so part of this first few weeks is about, you know, getting a sense of what the supervisor style is um, and then getting a sense of what your preferences is. Some students are the same that um, in the sense that they might have a very hands off style that they work very independently and, and, and you won't be contacting your supervisor a whole lot. Other students want a bit more of interaction with their supervisor and that's fine. Right? So there are different styles and. And just understand that that's fine, um, but um, you know, getting a feel for that in the first few weeks is something to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you know your supervisor doesn't uh, isn't able to help you with a question, it's it's often uh, it's something then that they can sort of direct you to someone else. And some sometimes that might be me as a graduate officer, uh, it might be Nada at the the research and graduate studies office. Um, but that's usually how it works. Um, so. Th those again are really critical sort of people and relationships, right? The supervisor, graduate officer, uh, NADA, and, and their office. Um, so that that's something I think you'll naturally get used to as you just you know hear from get emails from these people and, and interact with them. Um, you know, graduate school is a bit is a bit different than undergraduate school uh, in undergraduate studies in in the sense that there's generally a bit more responsibility. You know, uh, expected of students. So if you you know. Um, you know, so, so don't hesitate if you have questions. I think, you know, you just take the initiative and, and reach out to the supervisor and know, and, and, you know, hopefully I'll remind you of this a few times, but know that we're here to help you. It's our job to help uh, ensure that you have a smooth transition into this program and out of it in, in a good way, right? So you, you're, so that you're successful. So again, we're here to help. Uh, I know it can be intimidating, you know, especially in this context of, you know, you can't go and knock on someone's door or have a chat in the hallway. Um, but don't don't be intimidated. It's again, it's our job to to support you. Um, so with that, are there any questions I'm, uh, for the next part? I'll go into the nuts and bolts of the program. But are, are there any questions at this stage? And feel free to interrupt me. You've been all really great with your, you know, uh, sound on mute and, and so forth. But feel free to jump in if you ha have any questions. Okay, I'll take that as uh, all good to go. So, um, and then we can do a Q&A afterwards anyway, once we go through the program. So just a bit of context, which I think is actually really useful for, for folks when they when they start the program is, is to give a bit of that background context of the program. So the, the, the we call it the MAP program, the MA, Masters of Arts in Environmental P Policy, MAEP. So the MAP program, um, was developed by the Environmental Policy Institute in around 2010 and 11. Um, and, and the EPI still plays a key role in the um, in the organization makeup of the program. So uh, Dr. Andreas Klinkin is the director of uh, the EPI, and, I'm, and you'll get to know him very soon through a course he'll be teaching in the fall in other ways. Um, it's also, and this is sort of the institutional milieu of, of the program. So it's also an academic program within the School of Science and the Environment. So, so um, EPI is based in uh, the School of Science and the Environment at Grenfell Campus. So Gren, uh, the School of Science and the Environment is your academic unit, broadly speaking. Uh, at the same time, all graduates uh, programs at Grenfell, uh, as Nada mentioned, are supported through the Office of Research and Graduate Studies at Grenfell ca Campus. So they, Nada helps support um, the various programs across Grenfell Campus. Um, and so, as I said, the MAP program was the first uh, program developed in 2012, but we've since had a number of new programs come online. 
and uh, not online necessarily, but <laughs> on stream. And um, and now we have our first uh, PhD program starting this fall as well uh, in trans uh, transdisciplinary sustainability, which is really innovative and exciting. Of, of moving on to P, uh, PhD studies here at, in Cornerbrook and at Grenfell campus. So, uh, and, and Dr. Garrett Richards is the um, is the graduate officer for that program. So he's based obviously in MAP as well and the EPI. Um, so ultimately, if you have any questions, you can get in, talk, in touch with him. But uh, let's focus on our program for now, at least in getting this one finished before we talk about a PhD. Um, the other sort of institutional context is all graduate programs at Memorial. So we're based in Cornerbrook, obviously, but uh, at Memorial University, all graduate programs also operate under the School of Graduate Studies. So uh, most of the regulations and guidelines and, and paperwork that often that supports students and your funding often goes ultimately through the School of Graduate Studies. So much of the, the regulations and guidelines are um, are from the School of Graduate Studies. So again, that's sort of uh, the institutional umbrella and, and set of support systems. Again, that those all those departments and units are are there to support you. Um, uh, you know, it's useful to go in and spend some time if you have it. Um, looking at their websites, the SGS website is really extensive. Like it, you know, it has a ton of different policies and supports, and and so so it, it's useful to look through those. Um, yeah, okay. Um, just getting into the program then. Um, so what I often do if I was presenting in uh, on campus would uh, I would bring up the, the graduate uh, sorry the, the map handbook, right? So we've um, developed a handbook. You might have seen it on the EPI website. If not, you can find it under future students tab at the Environmental Policy Institute website. And it is a really, it pretty much has almost all you need to know to, to get going. Um, I think the current one is from last year, but um, just about all the information is still up to date and relevant. Some of the key uh, dates and, and so forth might be a little off and we'll be updating that handbook uh, very soon. Um, in terms of uh, funding, um, many of you, most of you have, um, you know, your funding package is indicated on your program of study and on your letter of offer. And, and if that includes a GA ship, uh, NADA has been, um, you know, probably been in touch with you already and if not very soon. Um, so that would be something, uh, if you have any questions about that, you can contact, you know, NADA and I, or um, if you have any questions about uh, GA ships and, and so, but we'll be rolling that stuff out and NADA will be coordinating that through uh, the Research and Graduate Studies Office over the next few days and week. Um, but if you have any questions about that, that's obviously important. We wanna get you um, that portion of your funding um, paid out as soon as, uh, as, soon as we can. Um, so just a quick note on registration. So you, I think some of you are not registered. Um, so uh, it's not a big deal at this point at all, um, but just um, go into the, on online system and, and register. I think you all need to register for ENVP 9000, which is basically just a registration, uh, generally speaking. And then um, I'll talk about courses maybe in a second. Um, and then you can register for your for various courses. Um, it also allows you, registering also allows you to access a certain bright, uh, Brightspace um, pages. So Brightspace is a online, uh, portal where you can see your course um, online course material. You'll see a little modules for listed for each course. So that's where you can go in and find out if if, if the professor has readings uh, already posted online. And I think some might have you know, the syllabus or course outline already posted and that sort of thing. Um, but don't be alarmed if not already because classes really for graduates for our program really classes don't start until next week. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of the program elements, I'll just go through a lot of this briefly. Again, the handbook has more detail. I won't get into too much, um, but you might see a reference to the policy and science orientation workshop. Um, it, recently, we've basically been um, incorporating elements of that within courses, so there won't be a separate one. Uh, and then the pre-internship workshop is similar. We've basically turned the 
sort of the internship uh, into it's more like a long a course that goes over the two the fall and winter semester where uh, the um, internship officer basically sets up several workshops you know, late in the winter and certainly in the early winter. Uh, Um, and Dr. Stephen Decker um, is the internship officer. Um, he was last year, and I understand he's going to continue in that uh, role. So um, you'll hear from him at some point, but generally the internship is something students don't get really into planning heavily at this stage. You have a lot of other things to get ready in terms of the fall and get, getting courses uh, underway and so forth. Um, in terms of your courses, um, so yeah, it's been past practice that the the graduate courses don't start until the second week of the semester. So this week is generally packed with orientation, planning, getting getting settled. Um, so next week uh, you'll be starting classes, um, and you can have a look after you've registered in terms of Brightspace if there's any materials for each course up there. Um, but again, don't be alarmed if there's not. Some professors are still finalizing plans for their courses. Um, and, and your coursework in the fall. So at the, in this program, we have two, um, sorry, we have a number of what we call core or required courses that you have to take in order to get through the program. And then we have you know, electives. Um, so for the fall, your two core or required um, courses um, are uh, Environmental Policy 6000, that's Foundations of Environmental Policy and Administration, and Environmental Policy 6000. Policy 6002, Research Methods and Design. Um, so the foundations course is taught by Dr. Klinke and uh, Research Methods and Design by Dr. Garrett Richards. Um, the two, there are currently two uh, MAP electives that are, are will be offered in the fall. Um, environmental Policy 6055 is Environmental Impact Assessment, which is cross-listed with senior undergraduate level, uh, Environmental Studies 4000, and the Special Topics course, Planning and Policy for Sustainable Communities and Regions. Um, and so those courses are electives. Now, this is something I think it's useful to think about depending on what stream you're in. So as you um, know, the, the, the MAP program has two streams. You can do the one-year um, research paper stream or the two-year thesis-based stream. Um, now, if you're in the one-year research paper stream, you're required to do two electives. If you're in the two-year thesis stream, you're required to do one elective. So if you're a thesis student uh, and looking at the fall electives, you know, I guess you have the ability or opportunity to say, well, um, maybe I'm not going to take a, an elective in the fall. I'll, I'll look at what's available in the winter. Um, there is one currently planned already for the winter. It's a risk assessment. Um, so if you were thinking, for example, I really wanted to do the risk assessment um, course, then as a thesis student, you, you can wait. As a research paper student, you know, it, it's um, you know, like technically you could take two in the winter, but I would highly recommend against that in terms of the just the, the, the load. Like graduate course courses are can be quite intensive. You know, it's um, generally a lot of reading for some of these courses. Um, and, and assignments and so forth. So uh, to take um, the two core courses, the two required courses and one elective, it, so the three in total, it's, it's quite a heavy load. So to take on four, I would advise against. Um, but in any, any case, um, most research paper students who have to do two electives overall, take at least one or take one in the fall, right? So you take one in the fall, one in the winter. Um, so if you're a one-year research uh, paper student, I'd probably advise that you take one of those two electives. I think both of them are on Thursdays. Uh, one is on Thursday morning, one is Thursday afternoon, I think. Um, yeah, planning for sustainable communities and regions is on Thursday morning and impact assessments on Thursday afternoon. Um, it's also not uncommon for our students to, uh, and, and I, you know, I think this is not a bad idea, is, Register if you're not sure, for example, if you're not sure which course elected to take, um, just uh, register for both and uh, and attend the first class. Um, you know, you get access to the syllabus, you get a sense of what uh, what one you might prefer. 
Um, it doesn't cost extra. You can actually register for as many courses as you want as a graduate student. Uh, the program is not on a course based fee structure like your undergraduate programs are generally. So generally undergraduate programs, you pay per, per course. Um, so it's not going to have any implications if you, you know, But that, if you're really unsure and want to get a better feel for the what the course will be about, um, yeah, register for both and um, and drop one of them afterwards. Um, so um, yeah, that's that's a few things about the fall, which I think is more the most important priority right now. Um, again, there will be two core courses or required courses in the winter, and then generally one or two electives that are available. Um, there's a limited number of courses at Memorial that are, I think, going to be available because that just about all courses are uh, online now at MUM. So it would technically enable you to take other courses at MUM. Um, a School of Graduate Studies has a short list of those courses that are available. I think there's a Gender and Women's Studies course and an Education course. Um, so if you're interested in exploring those, um, we might be able to look in, into that as well. Paul, I'd just like to say something there in regards to if you decide to do your two electives and go to the first, um, you know, as Paul suggested, to sit in on both classes on the first day or first day of classes, and then decide that you want to deregister de from one, make sure you do it by the registration deadline. So the last date uh, to drop or add to drop courses is September 23rd. So if you do decide to, to register for both electives, make sure that the one you decide to drop is dropped by September 23rd. Thanks, Nina. That's really important. So, yeah, I said there's no financial implications, but there are not, which are, there are not, but uh, you don't want to fail or zero on a course if you forget to register for it uh, and don't show up. So, um, yeah, so register and, and then keep stay on the ball and, and get out of it. Or And the reason why you might need to register is, is Given that we you can't just show up to a classroom, you might need to um, actually register to get access to the sort of virtual uh, meeting, right? So, um, but the I, I would say the other thing to do is simply reach out to the to the instructor um, and say, you know, I, I'm not sure I yet, and I, I'd love to be able to attend your class, and and they might be able to share the link or uh, room. Um, the link a video link without you registering so maybe that's even a, a better uh, approach is to reach out to the professor and say uh, uh, i'd love to check out your course or at least get a syllabus and and many faculty members are willing to share a syllabus or course outline um, before the course starts just to give students an idea there um, okay you know, i i just reopened the chat so i uh, haven't been following it because i'm going through my other material here um, Maybe I'm I'll come. trying to keep up on the chat. Yeah, and if uh, you know, I'll try to wrap up what I'm going to say about the program here sh pretty quickly, and then I'll come back to the chat. And there's anything I haven't touched on, Nada. Uh, if you haven't gotten to, that's good. We can address it. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's that's a few things about the courses. Again, uh, in the Q and A, please uh, ask me any questions. Um, I think you'll all have. Um, our normal correspondence goes through uh, grenfell.mon.ca email addresses. So in the past, um, you know, it's taken students, I think, the first week or so to get those set up. And I think normally through the library. Um, and I don't know if, Neda, uh, if, if you know anything about how that will work now, but uh, it might be simply reaching out to the library. But uh, I, I think you're automatically set up with a MON email address, but most communication ultimately ends up through the Grenfell. Um, so that's something to work out. Somehow. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. I missed the first part because I'm responding to a question from my other session. Um, but you're asking about the Grenfell email. Is that what you, you mentioned, Paul? Yeah. Does okay. it, uh, the library set that up for students? No, it's ITS. It's through ITS services. And I think I've been in contact with everybody. I hope that I've gotten, they've gotten my email by now. But what happens is you should receive an email in your MUN email account from Grenfell saying, save this link. And you click on that and it shows you how to connect to get your Grenfell email set up. But if any of you don't have your Grenfell email by now, 
you can just send me an email and I'll contact, I'll connect you with the right person at ITS to get that moving forward up for you. Excellent. ITS did so much, send Jim. an email, a second one, because they didn't send an original one. Um, so they, they did send an email to say, sorry, people didn't get it the first time. Okay. Um, the link that's to the register your Grenfell email. So it oh, probably that's would that's come that's within like the last month. Great. Thanks for that information, Paige. Yeah, so if you haven't received anything, um, reach out to, um, to, to ITS or um, or us to, to, to get that sorted out because it's useful. A lot of things will go through that email address. Um, okay, just uh, quickly on a few, I, think, I guess, broader things that um, people might want to take advantage of it going forward uh, and just to give you a bit of information on. Um, and if you attended the SGS meeting, you'll hear about this. Um, and if you want to go to it in the afternoon, you'll hear about it as well. Um, but there's uh, School of Graduate Studies has some, you know, professional development opportunities that they have uh, the EDGE, E-D-G-E program. So they carry on um, professional development opportunities and workshops for graduate students. Um, so that, that's a useful thing to check out. And, and obviously everything will be online in the fall. And um, I think it's, you know, this isn't, an, um, we often uh, assume the negative parts of course of working through a pandemic in this way, but you know, th this is one that might be positive or an example of how things might work out for, for a better experience. Um, because in the past we've often uh, in the early years, and NATO will remember this is, you know, SGS would carry out these neat workshops, uh, but we'd be way over here in Cornerbrook and, and students wouldn't be able to go to the sessions in St. John's, which is 800 kilometers away. Um, over the years, SGS has worked with us um, to develop some that, that were online or, or had the ability to bring students in online through Grenfell. Um, but right now, I, I assume everything they'll do will be online and just as accessible for you as it would be for a student in St. John. So uh, that's going to be neat. Um, I just want to say a few words about the Environmental Policy uh, Innovation Lab. Um, basically, it's an, an initiative coordinated by Dr. Garrett Richards um, and, and really heavily involved in uh, working with external partners for collaborative, you know, community-based ventures. Um, so basically, a lot of um, you know students who uh, who work um, their GAs uh, that are linked to the EPI lab um, often work on short-term research projects to address address partner uh, partners' needs. Right. So really interesting initiative, and I'm sure you'll you'll hear from more about it from Garrett um, as we go forward. Uh, and also, Garrett leads. Uh, um, he used to do it last year, and I think he'll be doing it this year. Policy, what's called a policy 101. So it's a, a session host uh, hosted weekly that basically organized around um, uh, sort of mini workshops looking at basic government politics and policy to give students, especially for those of you who might not have a background in policy studies, which is common for all of our students. So some of you might be thinking, well, I'm not used to this policy world. Well, most of our students have very diverse backgrounds. So, um, so don't worry, but th that's one initiative that we thought uh, to develop in the interests of, oh, you know, getting students a bit more acquainted with some of the basic um, sort of the lingo of policy and the, the uh, some of the ways in which it's studied and understood and, and worked through. Um, you'll, uh, and you'll hear from Garrett on that. Um, let me see. There are, uh, you know, if you're an international student, um, there's, you know, the key contact there again is SGS and the internationalization office. I think Grenfell has its own, but I, I don't recall if they've rehired. They had a position available for a while. Uh, but again, that's available online. And, and if you have any questions, reach out to us. Uh, and you've probably heard lots from them already because they've been very active in trying to help support students th through this time. There are other supports uh, throughout campus, um, uh, student health and wellness, uh, you know, graduate student unions, uh, the Grenfell uh, Graduate Student Society, uh, which has been very active and, and you'll probably hear from them. Um, and they've been a great way as well to, you know, and speaking of, uh, you know, Tasha's comment earlier about uh, ways to connect and, and as one ways to join those and be active on graduate student societies and unions. 
Um, so, you know, keep an eye out for, for those information on them. And, uh, um, yeah, that would be great. Um, the SJS website is really important uh, in terms of a lot of the regulations and, and paperwork and uh, an Office of Research and Graduate Studies at Grenfell as well. Um, and, you know, we're already... Um, that's really important. Um, just a couple of broad things that before we get into the Q and A, just sort of advice, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier that um, you know this is one of the more competitive programs at, at Memorial, certainly in the social science or you know that that area, and um, it's easy for people. I think someone mentioned this morning the imposter syndrome. So you get into your courses and you start reading this stuff, and you're saying, "What am I doing here? I, I can't handle this. This is way above my." Uh, <laughs> pay grade and um but you know listen you're you, you guys have all uh, done really well in terms of the competing for this program you have really uh good backgrounds and and you'll be fine right with with the supports and with hard work um so yeah don't worry about the imposter syndrome you'll probably all experience that we all have um, so, and also related to that, I suppose, be patient, um, I think with yourself, uh, with, with online and virtual meetings, you know, we're all, um, some of you might have, uh, you know, worked through this over the last few months in a, you know, a lot of, in terms of maybe summer jobs or just working. Um, but this is, uh, going to be the, you know, the way in which we interact for the fall, um, you know, online etiquette and, and those sorts of things. We're all getting used to that. Um, be patient with the program as well. You know, think about what what you know. I, I think one of the things I've seen students get um, maybe impatient with is, is that idea of okay, what am I getting out of this? What what am I going to get out of this that's going to get me a job? And and it's sometimes not at ease, you know, not quite apparent, right? We're not, uh, um, you know, you know, we're not a, a plumbing school where we give you that you know your journeyman elect or electric electricians skills. That are clear and and you get uh, that that clear designation. Um, it's a bit different, right? Some of the skills are are you're learning in the background. They're you know about communication, written skills, working in groups, leadership. Um, those are really important parts of the sort of seminar style of your classes. And and I think sometimes you know you're learning a lot of skills, but not seeing those as skills that are useful in the workplace. Um, but are really critical for employers and what they want to see and and people who apply to their jobs are, are people who can communicate right well and 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 clearly and and to work in groups respectfully and so forth um, again communicate early and and often to to the people around you you know if it's a supervisor you need to chat with if it's nada or myself you know don't don't be shy don't hesitate uh you know don't let things uh you know fester in terms of if you have really question big questions or or problems right like if you don't get paid or if the, you know then reach out to us right away or if you don't get um you know so, so just uh, commun communicate early and often um, I'd also, you know, again, advise you to read, read about the program again. You know, I'm going over a lot of information fast. You might want to go back to the handbook and read through it. Um, so, you know, almost everything you need to know is already there. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't, again, reach out to us, but most of the things you can have a quick look at the pro uh, at the handbook and, and find an answer. Um, again, read about, read about the departmental pages and supports, you know, what, who, you know, what kind of supports are out Grenfell, what's what's there in terms of health and wellness, and uh, th those sorts of things are useful. Um, and read your required readings and course. I know this is going to be challenging. Um, once you get going, you know, there's going to be other demands on your time. Some of you might be working, um, caring for family or friends. Um, so, you know, do what you can to read because those readings are part of the course requirements and, and it's easy to sort of put them aside when you have a lot of other demands on your life and time. But do, do what you can to stay stay up to speed on those. Um, staying connected. Uh, so, you know, the webinar seminars, get involved as much as you can. Again, you know, time management's an issue because, you know, you want to, you know, want to make sure you do your course readings. And maybe there's a neat seminar over on the side that you'd like to attend, but you're thinking, you know, can I handle that? But 
do what you can to add uh, those other types of uh, opportunities to your um, week to week activities. Um, and again, understand that this program is designed to make you, make you successful, right? We're, we're here to, to help you through it. You're not alone. Uh, again, your, your, your supervisors there, your instructors, uh, they'll be here to help you. And, and just the bottom line is if you have any questions, just ask, right? Don't, don't be shy that it's our job to respond. Um, you know, there, there might be delays in some response here from time to time, but uh, we're here to support you. Um, I think that's some of the, you know, again, overarching uh, big picture items that I wanted to touch on. Um, are there any questions? Um, if there's anything I missed, Nada, feel free to take a few minutes to highlight anything you'd like to, Nada. And I'm looking at the <clears throat> chat, so I, there might be things I need to catch up on there too. Yeah, I think there's a couple questions there for you, Paul, specifically. Um, I did going back on the on the chat room. You can see I did put in the link for a grad study session that's being hosted at uh, three o'clock this afternoon. As Paul mentioned, I sat in on that one this morning. There's a wealth of information um, from various people throughout. The School of Graduate Studies, and it's certainly a very informative session. Uh, I attached the link below for the three o'clock session. So if you want to register, you just click on that and go ahead and register. Um, there's a little bit of a column. Uh, Paul, there was a question about the elective for 6520. Okay, and I'm curious, yeah. that's kind of in the works right now being worked on, I think. So, um, yeah, thanks, Nada. I'm just catching up to the chat. So, 6520 will be, um, let me see, I had a note here actually. Thursday. It's definitely on Thursday. Um, and I think it's, yeah, Thursday mornings or, or Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Thursday morning. And that might be, if you go into your registration, registration system, I know it had been submitted recently, so it might be available and clear by now. Um, and if not, it will be very, very soon within a day or so. Um, so that's I actually spoke with the instructor of that course, cause she was wondering about the student's registration. So I think she was going to reach out to those who had registered for the course uh, individually as well. So if you are registered for that elective, you'll hear from her. Great. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone has any questions uh, about the program or the that course or other electives, just reach out to us. Um, the, the instructor should be. Their name is probably in the system right now, so you can find out if you don't see it or don't just let me know it's email me and I'll, I'll put you in touch. Um, environmental policy 9000. Okay. That was a, a neat, uh, um, I think this is from Samira will courses be uploaded in Brightspace. So, yeah, so the, the main, I guess, platform Grenfell or Mun faculty use is, is Brightspace, and there should be a course shell that you all will have access to. Some professors are more active than others in terms of what they put up there. So sometimes it's just it's just there where you can click on the link to join in the, on the virtual class. Others have the course syllabi, have other interactive chat mechanisms that they use. So it, it can vary from professor to professor. So you might want to just explore Brightspace. And, you know, obviously it's still a week to go before classes and, and some professors are um, finalizing their courses this week. So you might see changes uh, day to day from here, here on out. Um, let me say again, which the courses are cross listed. Okay, I think I have a question from Kaylee about the cross listed courses. So, um, Maybe just to be clear on the on the cross listed terminology. So we have one course that's in the MAP program, the Environmental Impact Assessment. It's cross listed with an undergrad fourth year level undergrad course. 
So that's one of your electives. It's technically usually offered at in Cornerbrook at Grenfell. Um, but there are a few courses at MUN that um, are not cross-listed, but they're at other departments. So education, faculty of education in St. John's, uh, faculty of um, maybe sociology or, or women's studies uh, has a course. So I can look that up right now. Um, and if I don't, I'll, um, I'll send it to you in a moment. Yeah, and I think Paige is also saying that uh, the course instructor is not there. So, um, Nada, do you have Mary's number? So, Mary Perez, uh, adjunct faculty at EPI, will be teaching that course. I'm sure we can get that email and contact information, Dr. Mary Perez. Let me see. Okay, so oh, I just Mary's uh, Grenfell email there. So she's teaching the MVP 6250 or 6520. I get it confused. Whatever the elective is. Yep, 6520. 6520. Yeah, yeah and, and her information is also on the EPI website, so you can check her out there. And uh, but yeah, so that's her email. Good. And, okay. Um, how's everyone feeling? <laughs> Any questions? Quiet all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of information. I know I've gone through, I went through a lot. Um, oh, Paige, were you trying to say something? Oh, sorry. I'm fine. I'm just a tad nervous, but it's, this has been helpful. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased it's helpful, but uh, yeah, it, it's, again, it's normal to be nervous, normal to be intimidating, uh, intimidated. Um, you know, again, supervisor contact myself, graduate officer. I'm I'm here. My job is part of my job um, is to um, you know make sure we get you into the program smoothly. You know, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. If you have any concerns, I know there's you know that it's a very different world. Um, it would be nice to go down and knock on doors and and uh, go see each other in the hallways, uh, and and hopefully that that can happen. Uh, in the new year, um, or in a limited way, I know some people have gotten come the corner brook in the meantime, and there will be ability to interact in some ways. Um, okay. Hi, sorry, I have a question. If that's all right, yep. just to confirm, we don't have any classes this week during the scheduled time slots. Um. We might want to be careful about impact assessments. So because that's under cross listed with an undergrad course, that actually might start Thursday. Okay. Um, so I know the two core courses will not be starting this week. I'm certain of that. Um, and I'm pretty sure Mary will not start her special topics course planning and policy for sustainable communities until next week. But the impact assessment course, because it's cross listed with an undergrad course, that probably might you know would have an introductory session on thursday um, and that's the one that's thursday afternoon so if you're interested in the impact assessment course um yeah either reach out to the instructor or show up um virtually on time thursday just in case there's a session i'm pr pretty sure there would be so sorry if there's any confusion about uh, that one I, I sort of overlooked the cross-listed undergrad course yeah. thanks tasha right okay Thanks. Um, and I just have one more question for Nadia, if she's still. I'm okay. still. Hi, thanks. Um, just since tuition is due tomorrow, um, I we talked a bit of before about um, 
registering as an employee so that we would have access to the employee services tab on one self service so that we could sign up for payroll deductions, which um, I know there are a couple dates online where it said the deadline to sign up for payroll deductions. Um, and I'm just wondering when the students will be able to do that so that we don't get uh, hit with like late fees tomorrow. Right. So um, if you've been awarded funding, which most of you have, obviously, uh, the process that that kicks in, I have to submit funding papers or your payroll to the School of Graduate Studies for processing. Once they receive those papers, then that indicates or that sets a chain of events on the basically. So what they'll do is they'll receive the paperwork and then they'll request to HR to have your employee tab started so that you can actually uh, take advantage of the employee deduction. Uh, Tasha, I'm just going to step away from my camera for a second just to get your file, but I, I can send you an email afterwards and tell you where we are with yours if that, that works for you. Sure, thanks. I really appreciate okay. that. Yeah, I'll do that after. Um, just um, thought of something as well, and this is, I think, relevant to international students. You might have, again, received information from the internationalization office or SGS, but there are certain fees that, um, you know, are, are, are part of um, sort of campus life or if you're here, right? So since you're not here, I think SGS is recommending or requiring you to opt out of paying, um, I think there's a foreign insurance, health insurance uh, fee. So, um, you know, again, check out the SGS website on that. Um, or just opt out uh, and look into it uh, again that should make most people happy that they have to pay one less fee um so so that that's just uh, something for international students other questions folks feel free to jump in anything at all Oh, and Nada just posted the opting out information there. Thanks so much. For international students, make sure you kind of read through and, and you know what it is you should be opting out of. This is some information that was sent to me this morning through by Andrew Kim, who's the director of student enrollment at SGS. So it's really important that you uh, read down through what you should be opting in and opting out of as well. Okay, anything else? Last call. <laughs> I don't know, Nate, if there's anything else. Um, again, we're always going to be here to, to answer your questions. We, we hope that this is or was useful today. Again, so many, much of this is sort of a reminder, um, but uh, we hope, we'll, hope, hope it's been useful. I'll just take a minute to remind you of a couple other important upcoming sessions for orientation this week. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday at 2 p.m. is the intercultural, intercultural Diversity Workshop. You all should have received an email with an invite to register. So if you haven't registered for that, I really urge you to do that. And then on Friday at 11 a.m. is our sexual harassment workshop where uh, you'll be working, it's a workshop that's offered by the Sexual Harassment Office. Uh, it's really important that you attend. And once again, you should have received an email, a WebEx email through me, from me for registration for those. If you don't have it, certainly send me an email and I can uh, make sure that I send you the link so that we get everybody registered. Please note that the inter, the sexual harassment session will not be recorded. Uh, it is a session where we take things very, obviously, all of our sessions seriously, but obviously for privacy reasons, this one will not be recorded. So we hope that you will join us. And just seeing Kaylee's message, yeah, I'm looking for the SGS page where they listed, I think it's three or four at least, um, courses that are available to students um, from outside their department, so faculty of education, for example. Uh, I can't find them right now, um, but I can send them in an email to everyone uh, after 
I don't want to take up too much of your time searching here. So I'll get back to you, um, everyone on that and send it, send those courses. And by all means, as Paul has said, uh, if you have any questions, that's, uh, you know, why I'm here and, uh, anything that you think of, or we have concerns, but certainly don't hesitate to reach out to me. You'll get used to learning my name. <laughs> yeah, Nate is the most, uh, probably the most important person in your life from here. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm sure they all have mothers, so. I don't but, want to put too much pressure. To yeah. <laughs> in the program, in the program. Um, okay, so, no, it's been really nice to, to finally, you know, see, uh, at least see some of you. Um, and and to start to having these conversations and, and we'll obviously we're going to get to know each other a lot more uh we're really excited to have you um you know we we uh and we look forward to getting getting started in our courses and 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 so forth so again if you're nervous or have any other things uh, just let us know and uh we'd be happy to help okay i think that's it for me i have a question for Nadia. Oh. The still on tuition, Nadia. I know I've been um, we've been emailing back and forth. Um, are you saying that at this point we should wait for it to be finalized before we can pay the tuition? I understand that you say the majority of us have been awarded um, scholarships. So I'm 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 kind of still not um, clear on how this tuition will be paid or how we're going to pay the tuition. Okay. Thank you. So tuition on uh, this year, normally, normally, and we use that word a lot, seems like this year, normally when you receive your student funding package, your baseline funding, your GA ships and any departmental support would be deposited directly into your student account. For those students who are not in Canada, who don't have valid study permits, who don't have valid Canadian banking accounts, obviously we can't go that route. So SGS has uh, come up with the possibility that now any funding you will receive will be deposited directly into your student account. So basically your student fees and your tuition will all be got posted to your student account and your baseline funding will be told and departmental funding will also be applied against your student account. Please note this is for international students who don't have Canadian bank accounts or social insurance numbers. Um, and as I mentioned, when it comes to graduate assistantships this year, if you're not in Canada with valid bank accounts and social insurance numbers, we cannot hire you. That's the law, we can't, the, you know, our hands are tied by there. But we're hoping that once you arrive in January, hopefully, we're hoping that we'll be able to, you know, set you up on your GA funding uh, and it won't be an issue. Uh, for all other Canadian students as it relates to graduate assistantships, uh, we can still hire you, but I do have to know your place of residence where you're currently residing because that affects the workers' compensation side of your payroll. So we need to know what province you're residing in in order to get that move moving. So, Diane, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, your payroll has been submitted to the School of Graduate Studies, um, so we can follow up if you have more questions uh, through email, if that would help you out. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I understand you correctly. You said at this time, we don't need to do anything. I understand. Correct. But tomorrow is the deadline for the tuition because it's showing up that we've not paid, I've paid zero. So would that be of any implication? No, you, there should be no implication because of the way, uh, you know, the unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in this academic year, uh, okay. all the, the money for your tuition will be, for your baseline funding will be applied directly towards your student account. Thank you. Thanks, Nita. That's uh, and it sort of reminds me of what um, you know. No one's asked, but this is a question that most people are thinking about at some point: is what's going to happen for the winter? And just to let you know in advance that we don't know yet. Uh, my understanding is that Mon is hoping to make a decision maybe by the end of September. I thought it was going to come earlier, but um, I don't think they fully know. But hopefully, sometime in September, we know 
what the plan is, whether they're going to um, um, continue online for many or most courses, or it's really the protocol for in-person classes. So um, we still don't know as faculty and staff yet. So um, you're in the same boat as us, uh, wondering about that. Um, okay, I think I might add something else, but it's escaped me. Um, Okay, um, any other questions? And, and Diane, thanks for that uh, one that right there. Oh, I see a question from, oh, I think this is for a page. Uh, Dr. Um, Chukaleska, I think, uh, Rosa Chukaleska. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, and if Thank it's wrong, you. if it's wrong, you can blame me. Say that's how Dr. Same. Foley said it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Dr. Andreas Klinke uh, is how you pronounce Dr. Klinke's name. Dr. Garrett Richards is pretty straightforward. Stephen Decker, pretty straightforward. Uh, I just thought of another thing too. Uh, of course, you always kind of think of other things as you come up. Um, more importantly, for the one-year route and those, and for the two-year thesis route as well, I will remind you that when it comes to registration, make sure that you register for EMVP 6030 and 6999 in the semester in which you're going to complete those two courses. Because a lot of students come in and they see that that as an option and they know it's on their program of study. But 6030 and EMVP 6099, the research paper, you should not register for that until it's the semester in which you're going to complete that course. Normally, it's the spring and summer semester, so keep that on your, you know, on your radar for when that happens. Thank you, Nita. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have lots more to tell you. <laughs> once you get in through the door, once we yeah. get our hands on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, maybe maybe that's my final word. But I don't know. Anything else, folks? Okay. I think that's it, Nada. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Everyone for taking uh, time out of your busy morning. I'm sure it's. Uh, you're, you know, you're, we're welcoming you into uncharted territory, just as it is for you, it is for us as well. Uh, it's certainly new, this new virtual world that we're living in, and, uh, but we look forward and we're excited. We're excited to welcome you to Grenfell Campus, and uh, hopefully when January comes, we'll be actually able to physically welcome you here, uh, and that way we'll, you know, have to make that connection and I'll find you someday sitting outside my office door saying, oh my gosh, how do I fix this? And that's what I'm here for. I'm that person. Um, so welcome again and uh, good luck with your the start of this new journey of your education. Bye everyone. Talk soon. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.